African startups got off to a sluggish start in 2024, raising just $83 million across 31 disclosed deals in January. Well, that's according to data from Africa, the big deal. But this marks a steep decline from the $545.1 million raised in 20 deals during the same month in 2023, representing an 84.8% year-on-year drop. The January 2023 fundraising activity was, however, heavily influenced by a single large deal, that is the $443 million acquisition of AI company Instadip by BioNTech. Excluding this out here, African startups in January 2023 uh, raised roughly $99.1 million, bringing the year-on-year -year decline to a more moderate 16.2%. This suggests that the underlying growth of the African tech ecosystem remains relatively stable despite the headline grabbing fund and slowdown. Now, my guest, Dalintin Onyago, has a diverse work experience in various companies and roles. He is currently the co-founder and CEO of Aladdin Digital, an app that supports Africa's economy by providing an ecosystem of solutions for gig workers and SMEs. Prior to that, they founded and advised Blacklisting, an alternative database for chronic debtors and fraudulent individuals reported by verified online lending firms in Nigeria. Darlington also served as the MD of Ocash Nigeria under Opera Software AS, where they handled business development, product development, strategy, formulation and execution and people management. Many thanks for joining me on Business Insight, Darlington. Um, I'm excited to be here once again. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year to you. All right, now, uh, Darlington, how's the African startups looking this year from reports that we have so far? Uh, is, are there really anything to go by from what you have seen and heard? Yeah, you know, every, year, every year comes with its own challenges and uh, excitement. But the end of that, uh, the projections should be sure that, that the law or the investment unit that we experienced in 2023 uh, might still continue uh, in 2024. Uh, if there's anything to go by, uh, the funding in January, about $3 million that came in January to Africa, uh, showed uh, that the majority of the, the, the bigger deals were going to other sectors like agri-tech, clean-tech, and health-tech, uh, which means that the fintech space uh, is seeing uh, a heavy decline in funding. All right, so um, I mean, we, are, we, are, we might experience uh, further winter in Africa because um, investors are becoming smarter. They are going away from uh, just you know, the hype of having a startup to actually doing proper valuations and going for study uh, business, businesses that actually make profit or that turn out revenue, not just um, yeah, creating a startup for startup's sake. All right, uh, let's uh, move on now. According to uh, Tech Cabal, uh, the three sectors with the highest funding, that is uh, the Agritech with um, $26.3 million in raises, Cleantech with about $18.1 million, and Health Tech with uh, more than $13.5 million. Various sectors, most notably FinTech within the ecosystem, have observed a decline in funding compared to the sums raised in previous year. What are we expecting to see, really, and why is this so, really? You know, those three sectors, they're actually gaining oh, uh, momentum. Oh, thank you. Somebody mentioned that there are over 20,000 uh, startups in Africa. I'm sure out of that 20,000, if you take a very uh, question, you realize that probably 60, 70% of them are actually fintechs. So the fintechs have had their base, right? there are so many fintechs everywhere. In Nigeria, here, there are so many fintechs, so many loan apps, so many digital banks, so many uh, mobile money uh, startups, uh, so many startups in the dream B2B, you know, uh, trying to solve SME uh, issues. So, I mean, the fintech space is already, as I said, saturated. There are so many guys doing the same thing. Uh, the same, similar apps doing the same thing with little variations of innovations around that area. Across Africa, it's the same story, all right? So, and the truth about the matter is that fintech is hard. Fintech is not easy, all right? For you to turn a profit in fintech, I mean, it's um, quite difficult. You, you, you begin to hear very, very few fintechs that are profitable around the world, very few. For example, you see the story of Time Bank, uh, who became who turned it a profit of two point one million dollars recently after the trading losses for uh, for some time. All right, so uh, then you see the uh, people like Revolut, uh, New Bank, and you know in Latam, as a couple of banks just sparingly, you just see a couple of New Zealand. There are about three fintechs 
that eventually become profitable. So it takes years of hard work, innovation, creativity, and a lot of funding to turn that corner where you go from either making losses uh, to becoming profitable. So investors are beginning to see that um, fintechs are is more of a valuation game than a profit game. And they are now putting their funds where people are solving more critical issues. For example, agri-tech will always be very important. People must eat. <laughs> Whether you are, you are good looking, you are hungry, you are a billionaire or a trillionaire, everybody must eat. So, I mean, why would I invest into an agri-tech startup that is solving real issues that has to do with agriculture, you know, food production? Health is very important. Every people are sick. Uh, millions of people are going through sickness. So you see, anybody that comes with an idea to solve a particular sickness, disease, or to improve a particular process mm. for healthcare delivery, I'm, I'm happy to invest. But as the people are looking at real issues right now, not just the hype, you know, of that fintech things and all the razzmatazz that comes with fintech at the moment. Okay. Let's leave the African stage right now and narrow it down as we come closer home. How is Nigeria playing really in the sector of fintech, agritech, health tech uh, generally, specifically? Uh, what are we supposed to watch out for in this year, 2024, from the key players? Okay, so in 2024, we are going to be seeing a couple of things in the Nigerian space. Uh, first of all, the reality is not done in the people. Uh, you know, Nigerians are very smart. Well, anything that we do, we do it to the utmost. As in, we are, <laughs> when this fintech is, uh, sorry, when the startup thing started, you see a lot of young smart people, they, they see start up as a ticket uh, out of poverty. You know, they see ticket as a ticket out of hunger. You know, and people just say all kinds of startups. You know, I, my office is in a place in uh, where we have so many startups in that building. It's a co working space. Um, that's the same place where you have the almighty flutter where they stay there uh, downstairs. So you have a lot of startups with different ideas. You know, every room is a startup, every room in that particular building is a startup. So because of the kind of funding, Startups we are getting in 2021 and 2022, where you know, we are raising hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of thousands of dollars. I saw young people, 27 years old, 26 years mm -hmm. old, raising $17 million. $17 million is a very young person, not yet married, not even understanding what the world about. People are raising a lot of money. So it was a ticket out of poverty. But now the bubble is, has busted, and uh, you know, investors are becoming smarter that some of these investments are never going to come back. All right. Mm -hmm. So the truth about the market, we're going to receive a lot of mergers and acquisitions. A lot of smaller startups will be bought over by bigger startups. A lot of smart uh, startups that are struggling with cash now are approaching bigger players, commercial brands, to see how they can be acquired or how they can you know, be powered by those that people that have the financial muscle, especially if your product makes sense. All right? So we're going to be seeing a lot of people resigning from startups. There was initially in the last two years, people were resigning from commercial brands and they are moving into startups. I know a couple of my, I was in banking, so I know a lot of my friends who left banking to go out and start jobs in startup. But now most of those startups are running out of cash. So we're going to be seeing people going back to telcos, going back to banks, going back to other, other sectors that are more stable, sustainable, because they want to keep their jobs and put lifts over their head and bread on their table. So we're going to be seeing uh, 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 a lot of that happening. We're going to see a lot of uh, startups also <clears throat> shutting down because, I mean, we are all struggling. Everybody's struggling. The mantra right now in the startup scene is do not die. You know, do everything possible to survive. And that's what everybody is doing. A lot of startups that we're all scratching, we're all, you know, biting our fingers to see how we can survive and see how we can keep uh, the business going. So that's just more in the scene. So people that are going to be innovative are going to make it. And also, founders with experience are going to be sought after. So if you're a founder with experience, all right. you're going to be sought after. Yeah. Uh, Let's, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I was just going to butt in. You talked about um, bringing innovation and those with experience who are going to stay and some people, um, some, uh, some startups that are going to go under. But specifically, last year, you and I were talking about some things. You talked about some innovation that uh, you were going to bring into the, 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 the system, the fintech system. So specifically, what is Aladdin doing differently in the year 2024? You talked about innovation uh, that would actually drive uh, those who will remain in business this year. Okay, so I mean, Aladdin, I mean, Aladdin is three years old. Uh, January uh, 9th, made us three years. I mean, the last three years have been topsy turvy, has been turbulent, and it has not been easy. You know, we are we are not among the fortunate ones to raise millions of dollars. So we had to bootstrap with the little funding we got in the last three years. It has not been easy. So what we realized is that you know we've been in the Nigerian space for a while, although we're a US company or also registered in the UK, but. Our major market has been Nigeria. And with the, the nose dive of the Naira, the Naira not going to 1,000 for 1,500 Naira per dollar, we realized that any revenue in Naira is no longer sustainable. 
For example, your investment gives you half a million dollars as investment and it's expecting a return, right? And then you are earning 30 naira for transfers or 10 naira for transfers. In some cases, because you want to compete with the big boys, you make your own transfers on your app free. You know, the loans are not being paid back. There's so much hunger in the land to give out loans. Nigerians take your loans and they don't pay back. They see it as God's blessing and God's you know, rewards for prayers and all that. So, I mean, it's really tough. So that's why we say we are going to be moving away from not just depending on the Nigerian economy, but diversifying into entire Africa. And that's why this year we're launching the Pan-African app, the Aladdin Global app, that allows you to actually onboard anybody from anywhere in the world. So whether you're an African in diaspora or you're Africa within Africa, we're trying to connect Africans everywhere. So our mantra now is that we're connecting Africans or Africa through payment. So wherever you are, you're in Germany, you're in America, you're in Botswana, you're in Egypt, Aladdin is the app where you can download, you can get your you know, sorted, your KYC sorted, and your KYC. So whether you're a business or an individual, you want, we're trying to create one ecosystem where Africans can transact, they can do trades, they can do you know, our payments within the same ecosystem. Thereby reducing the cost of payment within Africa. The average cost of payment within Africa is about 15%. Uh, sometimes in between some corridors, it's almost at 36%. So we're trying to crash that particular cost down to probably 5% or less, or in, in some cases, 0%. We are doing a large to a large payment we're doing the same a ecosystem. So that's the innovation we are bringing. But like I said, for this to happen, and we also need investors. We also need people to come on board to partner with us. Uh, m and are open to m and are open to health shares, are open to all kinds of financing models to ensure that we right. carry out this vision for Africa. Right. Yeah, can you can, uh, yeah, I can hear you so far. I can, yes. Okay, so fine. Uh, even last year, we also talked about Afro-global expansion in the midst of a struggling economy. I want us to talk about that again, because right now, Nigeria is really uh, uh, bearing all the pinches in terms of uh, the free fall of the Naira, and uh, you talked about uh, uh, loans not really being uh, paid back, and of course, the interest, uh, you know, when you actually, you know, deal in Naira and all of that, or you have to transact in dollars. Let's talk about how we can actually expand, uh, you know, Africa to be global in the midst of all of these challenges. We have one Nigeria on the one side, and of course, Africa, you know, on the, on the other hand. Okay, like I mentioned uh, uh, last year, it's the same thing, but it's becoming more pregnant and more and more. Uh, important that I mean, African businesses, SMEs, we're going to think about how they earn money, asset yeah. Naira, how they earn money in dollars, how they earn money in pounds, if possible, how they diversify your revenue streams. You know, it's very important. And one of the ways is that I mean, the, the Nigerian market is one of the biggest markets in Africa, over 250, 60 million people. But there are other African countries so who, who may need your services. Apart from African countries, there are other African countries around the world that may need that particular product that you have or that service that you have. So it's time for us to. Uh, we need to think outside the box. I mean, we need to research. Uh, what can I export outside Nigeria? Uh, what, what service can I export? What both uh, tangible or intangible goods can I export out of Nigeria? The product I have to do, can somebody else in uh, Ghana buy that product? Somebody in Ghana in the public? Uh, is there a need for that particular product somewhere else across Africa? So we need to start thinking about just not just in Nigeria, but even within the Nigerian market. If you are in the north, I mean, can start thinking about how can I do well in the south? If you're in the south, how can I do well in the north or in the middle belt? So, the, 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 apart from the Afro global expansion, there's also the expansion within Nigeria. For example, I realize that most of the startups are concentrated in Lagos. Everybody's in Lagos. Everybody wants to do their fintech, they are stuck in Lagos. Even when I went for a, a, a conference in Abuja, people were telling me, why not bring my company, Aladdin, to a those states, for example. So, you can even look at, even apart from, from going across Africa, right here in Nigeria. There are some states that don't have some of these fintech you know, services. You mm. know, so you can actually go there and become a dominant player in those states. But at the same time, if you have the capability, you can also spread your wings across Africa and earn a different uh, uh, sorry, currencies apart from the Naira. Yeah. Okay, the, just before we go, despite uh, the report that we got for late last year and January, specifically as per, as per the growth of startups, uh, how do you see? Uh, uh, the startup industry, you know, before the end of this quarter, and maybe subsequently uh, in the second quarter of this year. Okay, so this quarter, I mean, everybody's trying to find their feet, all right? I mean, I, did, I believe that before the end of the quarter, we're going to be getting announcements of different m and I mean, so a lot of measures and acquisitions, uh, those that, 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 are, that come to fruition, they're going to be announced because, to be candid, a lot of startups don't have cash. I mean, most of us are running out of cash. That's the truth. And everybody's struggling. So we're all in prayer mode. I'm saying that if I get somebody from abroad that's going to acquire me or somebody within the ecosystem that has muscle to 
uh, if you acquire your technology or acquire uh, your customer base or something. So we're going to be seeing a couple of M and A's, a couple of acquisitions that are going to be happening uh, there. And you'll be spreading the, the one or two fundings. You know, uh, those are going to be happening. You know, so uh, the tickets are, 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 are becoming smaller. For, for example, right. out of eighty-three million dollars uh, that training in January, I mean, um, more than seventy, eighty percent of them are just three deals. The rest deals, are, I mean, are just very small ticket size. So we hope that things improve uh, in this first quarter. I mean, that, that's our hope. Uh, and let's see how it goes. All right, thank you so much, Abdalid, and for all the useful insight that you have um, provided uh, on the show for today. We do appreciate them. And let's just hope that uh, we'll see the desired growth uh, that we expect uh, in the startups and fintech and all of them generally in Nigeria. Well, many thanks once again for your time. Thank you so much, James. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, all right. good luck to you. <laughs> And that's the size of the show for today. Many thanks for being there. I am Justin Akadonye, Business Insights. We'll return to your screen same time. Bye for now.